Senator Braun. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I've got two sets of questions, and I'd like for Dr. Fauci and Redfield to give about a minute each to the first. I want to get the broad numbers. Uh, I think, Dr. Redfield, you might have been on record that you think there's 10 times as many cases out there as, and I know that's a guess. Uh, I'd like to know, uh, because if that's the case, all of a sudden the fatality rate goes from 5 percent down to 5 tenths of percent, 20 times as many cases, of course, uh, two and a half uh, down to 0.25. What is your start with you, Dr. Redfield? How many cases do you think we actually have out there? And then, how many uh, vaccinations and our herd immunity combinations as a percentage of our total population do we need to get to for this thing to be in the rearview mirror? So we got a few big numbers to kind of relate the journey ahead. Thank you very much, Senator. Qu quickly. Uh, we now know that this virus began to really spread in the United States in, 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 in March. Uh, and in between March and the end of May, you know, we've been able to do antibody testing, and that's what allowed us to understand how many people were really infected. So that during that period, uh, it, it was our best estimate, about 10 to 1. So we're probably talking over 20 million, 22 million Americans have been infected. I don't want people to assume that's the same ratio now in June and July going forward because is you think it's more than that? No, I think it's going to be less because we're doing more and more testing, okay? okay? But clearly it gives us a good idea the extent of infection uh, was uh, more uh, in March, April, and May, uh, not 2 million individuals, but more, more closer to 20 million individuals. And what is your opinion of how many uh, individuals we need vaccinated and are having herd immunity before uh, this thing goes into the rearview mirror. Yeah, Tony may comment on that too. It's, it's really got to be over 70% of the population has okay. got to be immune before we even see any impact on herd immunity. Dr. Fauci? No, yeah, I totally agree. Given the transmissibility, which is highly efficient, you're going to need some, somewhere between 70 and 85%. I would say 70 at the lowest. Okay. Second set of questions would be on the issue of herd immunity, because, of course, we've got uh, the, um, we don't know how long it's going to take to have an effective vaccine. Um, and I'm guessing uh, when you're talking about herd immunity, it's got to actually confer immunity if you get it. And there might be some uncertain. Let's assume you do get the immunity. Um, what is the, um, uh, how do we go about the approaches that we've used to this point? Is herd immunity going to be something that you think uh, will march through if we would take the strategy of having uh, a different approach for younger people that seem to have lower hospitalization rates and less significant consequences? Because I think that's another thing we need to know, because I think that's already going to be done by each individual in a way as they size up their own personal risks. So how much can we count on herd immunity? I can answer quickly and then turn it to Tony. I think it's important to realize even now we're probably looking at somewhere between 5 and 8 percent of the American public has experienced this virus. So for me, herd immunity as a basic strategy, you're talking about a multi-year strategy. This is why it's so important that the alternative strategy is a biological countermeasure in the development of a vaccine. One of the, one of the issues that might be complicating, um, I don't think it's going to be something that is going to be any kind of a showstopper, but we've got to realize, and as Senator Paul said, we have to be humble and know there's a lot we don't know. <laughs> and what we don't know is what the durability is. In other words, so if you wind up getting herd immunity to 75, 80 percent, what we need to learn, and only time will teach us this, is how long this immunity lasts. Is it a year, two, three, four, or is it even less? Is it months? We don't know. When we find out, then that will inform us as to whether or not if you get a vaccine, how often you need to boost it. So we have to realize we don't really know the answer to your question in any definitive way. At least that gives us a, some clarity, some parameters to live within. Uh, Senator Hassan uh, stressed the point of protecting the most vulnerable, because to me, the one thing it looks like we can certainly do is to take that highest risk group uh, that from the data we've already got and build, in essence, an iron dome around them as the one thing that would seem to be the most important 
thing to do where you get certain results. And um, I think that has to be in place as we, the uncertainty of herd immunity and when we get an effective vaccine actually converge. I might add just, we always think about herd immunity with regard to natural infection and or vaccination. But when you wanna talk about protecting the vulnerable, we want to see if some of the other programs that are more prophylactic treatment programs, like passive transfer of plasma or monoclonal antibodies or hyperimmune globulin, those are some of the things that you can do to protect the vulnerable until we do get an effective vaccine. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Braun.